Section 3.6 is more of the same, except now we're graphing these rational functions. First, so first we'll review transformations of graphs. We'll definitely want to memorize this one, one over X, which has a vertical asymptote at X equals zero. And why does it have a horizontal asymptote? Why is Y equals zero the horizontal asymptote? What's the degree of the denominator and the degree of the numerator? Zero. We have no variables there. So the degree of the denominator is larger. Y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, this next one we want to memorize. Y equals one over X squared. Vertical asymptote when the denominator is zero. Horizontal asymptote y equals zero because the degree of the denominator is two, which is larger than the degree of the numerator. Okay, so a little review from last time. Why is it when we approach the vertical asymptote, this one goes opposite directions toward negative infinity on one side, positive infinity on the other. And this one, it matches. This is a factor of x minus zero, which has an odd exponent. Odd, which means they go in opposite directions. This one corresponds to one over x minus zero squared. Because this is even, they go the same direction, both up or both down. Yeah, both up in this case. Let's do example one first. Let's say the base one, what does it look like more similar to? One over X or one over X squared? One over X. And let's say that I have H of X is defined as one over X. Then really, if I can say F of X is equal to H of X plus one on the inside, and then times negative two on the outside. So maybe I'll write this as negative two times one over x plus one. So far, one over x plus one looks like h of x plus one. And then I have a times negative two on the outside. For transformations of graphs, what should I do first? Horizontal shift first. And which direction? Yes, horizontal shift one to the left. What should I do next? Okay, do I do the two or the negative next? The two, which second step would be the close, yes. Vertical stretch. I should be more specific because there was, I think all of you except for three missed the horizontal stretch on the test because you have to be stretching from somewhere. So if I stretch my face from here, it looks different than if I stretch my face from here, right? This one makes my forehead look big. This makes my mouth look big. So from where, right? From the x-axis. The horizontal shift stretch is from the y-axis of a factor of two, or sorry, by two. And the last thing would be what? Yes, reflect over the x-axis. So we'll first do the shift. I had this vertical and horizontal asymptote, and I want to shift it to the left one. Is that right? Okay, so that's the first step. And so I'll just draw my graph like this. Okay, that's the horizontal shift. Then I do a vertical stretch 
So that means I look at this distance from the x-axis of one, and I want to make this point twice as high. This distance here of two, I want to make it twice as high. This distance of one half, I want to make it twice as high. If I do that for every point on my graph, my new graph, same thing here. This distance of one away moves here. This distance of a half away moves here. And we do this for every point on the graph. Can you imagine what would happen to the green lines if we reflect them over the x-axis? Yeah, so this distance switches to here. This distance switches to here. So imagine me erasing everything except for the blue lines. The blue line is my actual graph. Any questions about this? G of x looks like one over x squared. So maybe I'll call k of x equal to one over x squared. How is this being altered? Vertical shift by what? So maybe I'll say I'm plugging in x plus two into the x position. So that would be k of x minus two. And then I have a plus three on the outside. So I do which shift first? Yes. So first, horizontal shift, which direction? Right by two. And then I do next vertical by three. So I have these asymptotes move up two, up three, right two, one, two, one, two, three, and draw lines. Now for one over x squared, it goes to zero much faster. So we'll want to make sure it goes to zero much faster than one over x. Any questions about this? Here's the steps to graph. These are monster problems. I'd highly recommend doing these on a separate sheet of paper, not just uh, plotting a few dots on Alex. Okay, you must reduce first. So factor and reduce must be your first step. If you don't factor and reduce first, you may accidentally write more vertical asymptotes than there should be. Okay, so step one, can I factor the numerator? No, non-factorable. Can I factor the denominator? X plus two minus one. Okay, and guess what? This is reduced. So if it's reduced, that means that I can find the vertical asymptotes right away. Where are those vertical asymptotes? Good, when X plus two times X minus one, when denominator is equal to zero. X equals negative two x equals one. We want to sketch those vertical asymptotes. Does my graph have horizontal, slant, or nonlinear asymptotes for far left and far right behavior? Good, so what gives it away? Y is equal to, just look at the lead terms. X squared over X squared reduces to what? One over one. Y equals one is the horizontal asymptote. The degree of the top and bottom are the same. You just divide the leading coefficients. Let's go ahead and start graphing these. I just discovered this new trick, how to draw straight lines. It's not amazing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, negative five. One, two, three, four, uh oh, five. One, two, three, four, negative five. I'm going to draw vertical asymptotes in red. X equals negative two. X equals one. And horizontal asymptote, Y is equal to one. Can my graph cross the vertical asymptotes? No. Can't cross the horizontal? And I'd like to find where that may happen. 
Step four, where's the cross the horizontal asymptote? Cross horizontal asymptote? Question mark. Might not happen. Do you remember how we did that? When is your y value equal to one? When x squared plus one, you set your function equal to the horizontal asymptote. How do we solve this? Multiply by the denominator. Subtract x squared from both sides. Okay, those cancel. And then we'll add two to both sides. Three is equal to x. What do I get if I plug three into my function? Three squared plus one, 10 over three squared plus three minus two. So we have the order pair of three, one right here. I cross there and only there. What's step five? X and Y intercepts. Where are the X intercepts? Y is zero. In particular, the numerator is zero. So once the numerator is zero, X squared plus one is equal to zero. We solved this before. X equals plus or minus I, none. My graph does not cross the X axis at all. That's very useful. How do I find the Y intercepts? Plug in X is equal to zero. What's zero squared plus one? over zero squared plus zero minus two, negative one half. Zero, negative one half. Let's plot it. Do you want to test for symmetry? I'm going to say most of the time it's not going to have a symmetry. And this one, because of how the how we have the asymptotes is not going to have symmetry. So I'm going to skip to step seven, plot additional points. So, I want to plug in some X values and find the Y values. You know what? We actually have enough information to draw our graph. So I have two options here from this point, right? Does this point, does my graph approach the asymptote on this side below or above? Above. Why above and why not below? Good. We, we discovered there's no X intercepts. It can't possibly approach that direction. It must go above. Okay, as I go to the right, what does my graph do? It must go where? It must approach, well, we know it can't cross this line, right? And it has to approach the asymptote. So it goes down and must come back to the asymptote. Can it cross it again? No, we only found one place it could possibly cross. Okay, so on the other side of the asymptote, should my graph go up or down? Why down? All right, so this factor is x equals one has an exponent of one, which is odd. So it must be opposite. And now, this must go through this point and approach the other vertical asymptote. Should approach the other, other vertical asymptote up here or down here? Why down? It cannot cross the x-axis anywhere. That is correct. So on the other side of this line, should my graph go down or up? Why? X equals negative two has an exponent that is odd. So it has to do the opposite. Must go up. And then my graph should, I don't know, approach the horizontal asymptote, right? Should it cross and come back? Or should it just go straight toward it? Straight toward it, because we say, we found out it only crosses once. Okay, so this is the general shape, which I'd give full credit for. If we want to be more specific or you want to double check, you can plug in some extra points. So what are some nice points to plug in? Maybe something like X equals negative five. Maybe something like X equals negative three. In this interval, maybe negative one. 
we already plugged in zero and got negative one half. You might plug in one, and I don't know. We already plugged in three, right? Three and got one. Plug into your calculator, see what you get. We get 13 ninths, five halves, negative one. I'm sorry. I should not have plugged in one. Why shouldn't I plug in one? That's a vertical asymptote. It's undefined there, right? Okay, so let's plug in two. And we get five fourths. Okay, negative five, 15 ninths, or 13 ninths, maybe one and a half. I don't know. We've probably plotted that about right. Negative three, five halves would be two and a half. I don't know. That's about right. Negative one, two, five fourths. Okay, that one is wrong, right? Two, five fourths should be here. So my graph should look more like this, just to be a little bit more accurate. How do you graph these rational functions? First, you must factor and reduce. Why is that the first step? Poles versus vertical asymptotes. So an example would be, should I do an example? I think so. It's been a long weekend. Let's say I have y is equal to x plus 2 over x times x plus 2. So this is not reduced, correct? This is not reduced? Not reduced. So that would look like 1 over x once it's reduced, right? It's still undefined, though, here. It's undefined. I got a new pen. Does my handwriting look any better? X equals zero and X equals negative two. It's undefined at those two spots because that's the original equation, right? But where's my vertical asymptote? I look at the reduced form to find my vertical asymptote. X equals zero. So this is a vertical asymptote, but what about this X equals negative two? What happens there? There's a hole there. So here, if I go to negative two and I look at my graph, it doesn't exist at this point. There's a hole there. Okay, any questions about this? So my graph looks like one over X when it's reduced. The only difference is that it throw out X equals negative two at one point. Okay, this is why we reduce first because that's what the graph looks like, the reduced form. Okay, so first, always factor and reduce. Second, where are the vertical asymptotes? Where are the denominator zero? Denominator zero, and x equals zero. Then we find the horizontal slant and nonlinear asymptotes. So after last night's homework, how do you know if you have a horizontal asymptote? Yes, the exponents. If the degree of top and bottom are the same, or if the degree of the bottom is larger, right? When do we have a slant asymptote? Yeah, the degree of the top is one larger than the bottom. Next thing you wanna do is decide when does your graph cross that horizontal or slant asymptote? Find the X and Y intercepts and some additional points. Okay, let's do this last example here. What's the first step? Factor and reduce. Okay, so do you like guess and check or AC method? 2x and x, what are factors of 4? 1 and 4, 2 and 2. Do any of these work? Plus 4, plus 1. So this would make x, this would make 8x, and they add to make 9x. So that's factored correctly. Over, the bottom would be x plus 3. Is it reduced? No, what can I cancel out? Okay, this is reduced because there's no common factors. Okay, so now that's factored and reduced, what's the next step? Vertical asymptotes, do I have any? Did you do last night's homework? 
You don't remember because it was like you did on Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When is the denominator equal to zero after it's been reduced? Yeah, very good. X equals negative three. Shall we graph it? Let's graph it so we don't forget. You guys know I figured out how to draw straight lines finally. Yeah. Okay. I'm just really excited. Okay. Where's negative three? How do I do a dotted line though? If I erase, it erases the whole line. I can't shift this. I'm having issues. All right. I'm going to just draw. Sorry. It's not so straight, but it's my vertical asymptote. Okay, next step. Do we have any horizontal asymptotes? The degree of the bottom, is it larger? Smaller. Okay, so none. Do I have any slant asymptotes? Is the degree of the top one larger? Yes. Okay, so I do have this. How do I find that equation? 2, 2x squared plus 9x plus 4. And we divide in x plus 3. How many times does x go in 2x squared? 2x times, yes. And then what's 2x times x plus 3? What's that? Synthetic? We could do synthetic division. Yeah, would you prefer that? I already started. All right, 2x times 3, 6x. For, all, for these problems, you can't always do it though, right? Only if it's x plus number, x minus number. In this case, it's x plus number. So we subtract and we get, I don't know, is it 3x? Bring down the 4. How many times does x go into 3x? 3 times. 3 times x plus 3 is 3x plus 9. We subtract it and we get what? Negative 5? Okay, so what's the equation of my slant asymptote? Y is equal to 2x plus 3. And why don't I care about the remainder term? Do I care about the negative 5 over x plus 3? I don't need to write it because far right, far left behavior, this term goes to 0 for very large values of x. So this is the equation of my slant asymptote. Can make rectangles too. <laughs> okay. Shall we graph it? Yes, let's graph it. One, two, three. Please practice graphing these on a sheet of paper. It's almost guaranteed to be on your test, one of these problems. A slope of 2x up to right one, up to right one, and so on. Here's the equation of my slant asymptote. Down to left one, down to left one, down to left one. I'm worried I didn't leave enough room. We'll see. Okay, what's step four? Yeah, we found the slant asymptote. We Does it cross the slant asymptote? Are we guessing? How do we know? You set the slant asymptote to x plus three equal to the slant asymptote equal to the function. Oh, sorry, h of x. Okay, one is 2x plus 3 equal to the function. 2x squared plus 9x plus 4 over x plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 3. I'll foil on the left, and what do I get? Are we good at foiling in our heads now? What's x times 2x? 2x squared, and then x times plus 3, 3x plus 6x plus 9x, 3 times 3, 9. Okay, is equal to 2x squared plus 9x plus 4. Let's subtract 2x squared from both sides. Let's subtract 9x from both sides. What do you notice? 9 equals 4? Doesn't sound smart. Is 9 equal to 4? When's 9 equal to 4? Never. So what does that mean? Doesn't cross. All right. Very good. Doesn't cross the slant asymptote. Okay. Step 5. 
What's the y-intercept? H is zero. So that would be four over three. Okay, zero, four thirds would be here. So we plot it. How do we find the x-intercepts? It's where the numerator is equal to zero. So we already factored the numerator, right? What did we get? 2x plus 1, x plus 4 is equal to 0 when x equals negative 1 half or x equals negative 4. Negative 1 half is here. Negative 4 is here. Can you draw the graph given just those three points? So the graph should go left to right only because it's a function. So let's just say from this point here, my line should approach the slant asymptote as it goes to the left. Forever getting closer and closer, but never touching. On the other side, it has to approach the vertical asymptote. Should it go up to approach it or go down to approach it? Let me just pretend. What's the problem with it going down to approach it? It crosses the slant asymptote, which we said can't happen, right? Therefore, it must go up. Now, if I'm unsure about this on the test, I had to plug in a value very close to negative 3, negative 3.1, and just check, do I get a large number? Is it going up toward positive infinity or not? OK, on the other side, is it also going to positive infinity, or is it going to negative infinity? Why negative? Very good. So I look at the factor of the denominator. This exponent is odd, which means it needs to go down in the opposite direction. So if one side's up, the other one's opposite for negative infinity. OK, so this line, I'm going to draw it, and it has to go through those two points. I missed it. I'm not sure how to do this. It needs to go through those points and approach our other asymptote. Any questions about this? If I'm unsure, how can I double check? Yes. Check, plug in more x values, and plot the ordered pairs.